Hey guys, today we are talking about one of the aspects of videography or photography that isn't super clear when you first get started. How does the sensor size of your camera impact the depth of field or beautiful blurry background bokeh you can achieve? This is important to understand because there is a trap that you can fall into. You learn that wider aperture, which means a lower F number, gives you a shallower depth of field and therefore more bokeh. That is totally correct. But Unless you know the part that we discussed today, you might think that shooting at f2.8 on all of these cameras, which have three different sensor sizes, should give you the same depth of field and bokeh, since it's the same setting, right? Wrong. We will get to plenty of comparisons and demonstrations shortly, plus you'll find product links and timestamps in the description. But first, if you enjoy this video, then like, subscribe, and let me know your questions or thoughts in the comments. Thank you. And as if it were fate, thank you rhymes with f2.8, which will be our first comparison. On reflection, that may not have been my smoothest ever segue. Here, you can see frame grabs from 4K footage shot at f2.8 on all three of our cameras. All cameras have been set up to have a similar field of view, a 24mm full frame equivalent view. But there are small differences in the field of view the different lenses capture when the camera bodies are placed on the same tripod or in the same spot. Plus, some of my framing when replicating shots isn't perfect. If you thought I was going to be ultra precise or competent then you clearly missed my juggling tutorial. Is this the perfect scientific test? No. But is it good enough to demonstrate how sensor size impacts bokeh? Absolutely. While I've been explaining, you should have spotted that our full frame and crop cameras get a lot more bokeh than the one inch sensor in our ZV-1 when everything is set at f2.8. Side by side, the difference between crop and full frame at f2.8 isn't so pronounced, but if we focus on our guitar example, we see full frame achieves more blur on the fingerboard of the guitar I placed further back, as well as bigger bokeh balls on our demo fairy lights. Comparing our vlog example in the park, it's also pretty close, but full frame produces noticeably more blur around the rail behind me and slightly larger bokeh balls in the upper part of the frame. If we move on to f4, a narrower aperture which should give a slightly deeper focal depth and less bokeh, we still see the same trend. The ZV-1 gives us noticeably less bokeh with that one inch sensor, the crop and full frame cameras are closer to each other and each give more bokeh than the last. But if we look at our park example, again we see a bit more bokeh with the full frame sensor. The leaves above me and window behind me are easy areas to see the difference. Or this phone example. The full frame sensor gives us more prominent bokeh balls and more blur on those lenses placed behind the phone, most noticeable with how obscured the text on those lenses becomes. And how about stopping down aperture again for a comparison at f5.6. We get the same pattern, though to my eye the differences between crop and full frame are actually a bit more apparent than at f4. Check out the blur on the design of the cushions behind me in this studio shot, and the fact we still have tiny but noticeable bokeh balls in our full frame frame shot at f5.6 versus nothing much in our crop shot. As most neutered dogs will tell you, small balls are still better than none. So let's recap. Wait, hold on. The script says recap as in summarize what we covered so far. Not a stupid joke about putting a cat back on Dave, you idiot. Uh, we know you get more bokeh and shallower focal depth by having a wider aperture and lower f number. We also know that the same F number aperture setting won't produce the same result with different camera sensors. Bigger sensors means more bokeh at the same aperture setting. So now let's cover three questions. Let's start with how can aperture F number be the same, but then give images that are so different? That's because F number is just a simple mathematical ratio. Focal length of the lens divided by the physical aperture opening size. So, on a 24mm focal length lens, if our aperture opens to 12mm, our f number is 24 divided by 12, giving f2. Thanks, Matt. I knew you were more than just a nice Pythagoras. The manufacturers are therefore being totally truthful when they say each of these cameras is shooting at f2.8 or any other setting. But all that means is the focal length of the lens is 2.8 times larger than the aperture opening which links us nicely to our next question. If each lens has the same ratio of aperture opening to focal length, why are the image results so different? That is because of sensor size. 
The bigger a camera sensor is, the more light it can gather. Unlike my post-pandemic body shape, more surface area is always better for camera sensors and bokeh. Plus, if we have the same F number and set up our cameras at the same equivalent focal length, the physical size of the lens aperture opening will always be larger for larger sensor cameras. That is because making things like focal length equivalent over cameras with different sensor sizes means you need to consider crop factor, which conveniently helps us answer our next question. Crop factor is the reason you need to multiply the focal length on smaller sensor cameras to get a full frame equivalent field of view. If you'd like a deep dive into crop factor in the future, let me know, but right now we're gonna keep it like my knowledge of proctology, light touch and on a need to know basis. The 16mm Sigma f1.4 we've been using in our testing pairs with the APS-C crop sensor of the A6400. So 16mm gets multiplied by 1.5, giving a 24mm full frame equivalent field of view. The crop factor from a 1 inch sensor to a full frame equivalent is around 2.7 times, which gets us from the 9mm physical focal length of our ZV-1 to a 24mm full frame equivalent field of view, as you've seen. Well, these same crop factor rules broadly hold true for finding equivalent bokeh and depth of field between different sensor sizes. If you set your aperture to f2 on an APS-C sensor and want the same look on your full frame camera, you can apply the 1.5 times crop factor and work out that f3 would be broadly equivalent in full frame. In reality, f2.8 or f3.2 are more likely the settings you've got available. The table on screen shows the aperture setting you may be using from top to bottom, while the columns from left to right show the full frame equivalent bokeh and focal depth that you will achieve at each setting. If you want something that looks like a full frame f5.6 shot, you'll need to set a crop body camera to f3.5 or 4 to get close, and you'll need to set your 1 inch camera to around f2. If you wanted to match the widest f1.8 aperture of the ZV-1 with its 1 inch sensor on a bigger sensor camera, you'll need to be at around f3.2 on a crop body or f5 if you're shooting full frame. Here are a few more examples to demonstrate. So what can we conclude from all of this? One, the same aperture F number setting across cameras with different sensor sizes will not give you the same bokeh or depth of field. Two, all the F number is telling you is the ratio between focal length and aperture opening, which when it comes to bokeh is literally only half the picture. Three, bigger sensor cameras will always give you more bokeh at the same F number aperture setting, both because the sensor itself is bigger, but also the aperture opening is bigger. And often a smaller aperture, higher F number, full frame setup will still give you more bokeh than a wider aperture, lower F number setup on a smaller sensor. Four, you can work out what aperture setting will give you a similar look between different sensor sized cameras by applying crop factor in the same way that you would for focal length. And that brings us to the end for today. Massive thank you for watching, especially making it all the way to the end. If you enjoyed the video, then like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts or questions down in the comments. But most importantly, until next time, take it easy.